Alright, Ethel Day 13. I was uh, thinking of um, responding to a conversation I had yesterday. Um, skeptical heretic kind of brought up this argument, so I think I'll talk about imposition again. Again, the argument came up that somehow you can't impose on something that doesn't exist. And even though your decision, even though every thought you're having is completely consistent with thoughts you have about doing something to somebody who does exist, even though your intentions are just as rock solid, the probabilities are the same, somehow this decision to have children or impose existence on somebody is immune from the same judgment we could apply to any other decision you make to drink and drive or do any other kind of behavior that might carry with it some sort of risk or implication on the welfare of somebody else. I think it's clearly, logically, it's the exact same kind of decision. It has implications. I use Scrooge as an analogy. So here's the, the scene where he's he's become the new man. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the Bob's your uncle made goes screaming out of the house because he's crazy. And no, no, this is a very tender moment, actually. This is very, this is very nice. You know, he gives her... See, he's not mad. Even a little bit. He messes up his hair. It's kind of funny. Um, and, uh, you know, he gives her a, whatever, some sort of gold thingy. And she said, what's this for? <laughs> this is kind of a funny line. You know, to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, see that. It's a Christmas present. Yeah, yeah, keep my mouth shut. See, that's funny. And then he laughs. Ha, 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 that's funny. But no, 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 no. I'm giving it to you because you're a human being and I give a shit about you and I think you deserve to have a nice day, damn it. And she's like, a Christmas present for me? I'm lowly shit and you you give a damn god damn it. Holy shit. Life isn't so horrible after all. Hug, hug. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's very nice, right? So, anyway, so she does a little Bob's Your Uncle thing. And, well, I mean, it's just great British crap. Um, so, I mean, Dickens was really quite brilliant. Um, my favorite, really. Okay, so go out there and do whatever. Horror and slut and such. So, anyway. And so she does something, whatever. Merry Christmas in keeping with the situation, which is kind of funny. So anyway, so he's doing the whole, like, okay, I'm going to become a human now. I don't know what to do. I want to send the giant turkey. Hey, boy, out the window thing happens. All that stuff. Yeah, I can do that, but it's just, you know, yeah, we don't want to get lost in the movie. Um, but, you know, I could talk over the movie. Yeah, I could do that. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, obviously, Scrooge before he gets, uh, he has his night of reclamation, and Scrooge after has a different impact on the world. It's just the truth. The world changes because he changes. So I could also analogize this to, like, say, Bill Gates and Microsoft. Um, he got into a very powerful position where he basically was the provider of the first operating system for the generic PC computer. Now, he had different paths, different choices he could have made in terms of how he was going to behave and how he was going to provide this thing to the human race. And his choice was, is to basically nail us all into a rental agreement where we had to rent an operating system for, from him for the rest of our lives. Now, you could argue that the he could have been very successful, made his money on Windows 3.1, made his billion dollars, had a very nice life and left it at that. Um, but no, it was his choice to be kind of scroogey, kind of greedy, and to say, no, I'll, I'll keep playing the game. I got this company now, and this company can have a guaranteed income on fixing this operating system that I own. And I can keep everybody else from touching it. I can suck up all the other competitors that try to write anything that also does the job or improves on what I did and I can, you know, take them to court and prevent them from fixing my bad software and I can have a whole bunch of people build really good software on top of my platform and because I own, it's like other people, it's like I could own the copyright to the wheel is essentially what Bill Gates did. He said, I'm going to own the wheels and so every car that's built on top of wheels I'm going to be able to make money off of it because people won't be able to buy the car without buying my wheels. 
So they're always going to have to pay me if they want a car. And that's basically, if you want software to work, you had to have the operating system. Anyway, and so that was the game for a couple of decades. And so the world would have been different if Bill Gates just said, no, I made my huge preposterous amounts of money. I will now make Windows 3.1 open source software. Anybody can fix it, do anything they want to it, make anything they want out of it and the platform is now the human races. And then it would have been a different world if Bill Gates would have done that. And I would argue it would have been a better world, a more a faster, progressive world, um, more innovative world. And um, it was his choice, though, to impose on all of us a darker world. You know, It could have been a lighter world or a darker world, and he chose to put us in Pottersville. So we can use the other Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life, as an example, where because of you know Jimmy Stewart's character, um, the world goes from Pottersville, this bleak, nasty, smelly, dirty world, to a world where people are living much more civilized and better lives because he prevented it from becoming Potter's nightmare. All right, so uh, all this is to just illustrate that we every decision we make has implications on the people that we live that live around us we don't live in the mountain somewhere where nothing's implicated by what we do we live in a place where every noise we make almost every fart has a consequence and the decision to have kids is clearly one of these very substantial decisions you're creating another conscious being you can't get more in somebody's face than to create them I mean really and to argue that you can't call this imposition. Like I said, the, it's as clearly as much of an imposition as me being some monopoly-holding ogre who you know controls every penny that goes through a town or something. That would be that the imposition is just as clear, the control is just as, as, as real, um, and um, it's, it's just semantics and nonsense to sit there and, and abuse language concepts um, and ideas and that's all it is it's an abuse to say I'm going to wiggle out of the idea of imposition because the thing I'm imposing on doesn't yet exist um, like I said we all are implicating the future um, if I signed a contract right now to to kill the firstborn child of whatever <laughs> you know I'll use some other example right so everybody's always accusing me of using Israel and Jews is an example, but let's just, whatever, whoever, the firstborn child of everybody over six feet tall. Um, clearly, some of those firstborns aren't born yet, and by the time my edict is imposed, they could have been, they could be. But at the time I made the decision, I'm clearly imposing on the future. I'm clearly imposing on a future circumstance. Um, and the, the imposition as in any more or less real than the imposition of right now, here and now. So we know that the probabilities are that it will be and it will happen, so it's just as secure an imposition. And it's just nonsense to say it's not because that future hasn't been um, harmed yet, because it doesn't exist yet to be harmed. But I would be creating it, and the cre it's the creation of the circumstance that we're talking about. Is, yeah, Scrooge is confronting um, uh, his clock, and uh, oh, it's okay, Bob. I'm not having gone mad, Bob. Uh, I did have a little bit to drink. Uh, yeah, I love the way they talk. Though he says, uh, "You know, he was late for work." He says, "We were making rather merry yesterday." I am behind my time. And these are just great phrases, you know. So go get a new coal scuttle and. Yeah, let's have a, a little bar, a glass of port and such, and yeah, we'll tell stories and whatnot. And so you go out there and do that before you dot another I or whatever, cross another T and such. Yes, yes, dot another I, yeah, but you do it. And so, so this is this is a great ending, though. It's like I don't deserve to be this happy. You know, so he says here, you know, because he's he's realizing that this is the value in life. The value in life isn't happening just inside this guy's head. He's realized that the value is happening in all of these consciousnesses. 
that's where the value is being created. And here he's saying to himself, look, I can make I can make people laugh, I can make people happy, I can make people feel better and have this burden lifted off of them. Um, and it's just it's such a power he has acquired now. And he acquired it in this very negative way, so he should feel a little guilty about that because, yeah, he, he stole it from the welfare of all the other people he destroyed and harmed and degraded in their life. But yes, it's now he has the, the, the he is able to feed off of, uh, in terms of his own uh, um, satisfaction and comfort, o over knowing that he has this power and using this power. And, um, you know, that's the game here, okay? It's, just, it's a value exchange game. It's a value creation game. And if you're going to create another human being, you've got to be aware of this isn't a guarantee that you're going to create positive value, that you're going to create somebody who um, uh, may generate um, uh, a substantial weight in dis 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 discomfort and dissatisfaction, that they may not live a charmed life. And um, that, that pain and that um, angst and suffering um, will be substantial and that it'll be on you it'll be your consequential impact it'll be your imposing on the world it'll be your imposition on the circumstance of reality um, even even if your child is is um, lives a relatively healthy and comfortable personal life you still have to recognize that even even creating a human being that has a positive impact in the world is not easy Creating an, an ethically strong, decent human being is not an easy task. And your child may be a bit of a menace in its relationships with other people. It may break some hearts. It may do some other things that are um, very... It may create a Pottersville. And it will be on you. <laughs> That's just a, a hell of a thing to be casual about and to say, I have some sort of right to roll these dice with the welfare of the future. And that's all you're doing. You're just saying, because you want to do something, you're going to roll dice with the welfare of the future. You're going to risk putting them in the drunk driver's car. And, and you're complaining because someone like me might say, you, sh that should, you should have a little bit of pause. You should do a little bit of thinking. And you should be at least capable of articulating some kind of sensible sentence explaining why <laughs> this, this right of yours um, exists and why you should exercise it in this affirmative manner when you have, when there is no evidence that outcomes are likely to be what you wish them to be. I mean, wishing doesn't make it so. I think that's a song. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, we got Terminator up in here. <sighs> He's gonna shoot all the cops in the knee now. Um, anyway, and uh, such. Yeah, I thought that was a little bit of a silly moralization in there. You know. I mean, you're fighting for your survival so you can save the future, and uh, I don't think I'd be worried about. Uh, <laughs> you know, you do what you got to do. But, yeah, I wouldn't marginalize. You, you know, you wouldn't marginalize your ability to make it into that future by playing some game that, oh, I can't hurt any of the police officers. I mean, that's stupid. Well, you can't fatally hurt any of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not much like cops. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, anytime they get, you know, I don't, I don't root for their side in most movies. No, I don't. Um, just leave it at that. So what else? Is there any other, um... I, th I think I'm taking care of it. I'm just mean that I, I just... It, I mean, I don't want to get derogatory, but I mean, this is, this is insulting intelligence to have to sit there and explain how every element of an imposition decision is being made by people when they choose to have children. It has every element of what you would call an imposing um, decision. 
it 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 mirrors it 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 parallels in every respect of every other decision somebody could make that might implicate the, the welfare of present or future human beings. It has all of those elements. It doesn't lack any of them but this irrelevant element. And and to, to use the irrelevant element. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a neat irrelevant element. The irrelevant element. Might be a good movie title. Anyway, is bogus and lame and silly tarted. So screw that. Oh, that's enough. Okay, moving along. So another imposition video. Until next time.